Okay. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present our data here. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, the possibility of uh, having found a new xenoantigen. Um, we found that human natural IgM antibodies bind to non-muscular myosin heavy chain type 2 on porcine endothelial cells. So what is NMHC2? It is a, a protein of the myosin superfamily, uh, myosin 2 subfamily, which includes skeletal, cardiac, smooth muscle myosin and non-muscle myosin. Um, actually, the NMHC2 is an embryonic form of non-muscle myosin, uh, and we are looking at the heavy chain of this, and there are three subtypes, NMHC2 A, B, and C. And the functions uh, of this are in cell polarity, cell adhesion, cell migration, and tissue architecture. Now, uh, why were we interested in this? And, and the reason for this is a, a series of papers actually published by the group um, of uh, Mike Carroll uh, around 2006. And they reported that they have identified a, a, a target uh, self-antigen in reperfusion injury. And my group is also working in ischemia reperfusion injury. And so, uh, we were very much interested in, in this uh, theory of uh, Mike Carroll and his group on uh, how reperfusion injury uh, could be, um, what could be the, a possible pathophysiological mechanism of ischemia reperfusion injury. And that's what, what they came up with here. So uh, they proposed that you have this NMHC2 intracellularly and upon uh, ischemia, it would go to the cell surface and be presented as the NMHC2 uh, neoantigen. And that would then be recognized by naturally occurring IgM in our uh, bloodstream and uh, initiate the complement cascade. And in particular, they found that there is uh, activation of the lectin uh, cascade, so that MBL binds to this IgM molecule, activates uh, the uh, lectin route of complement activation, and then leads to neutrophil and mast cell infiltration, and so on. So we asked the question, could the NMHC2 neoantigen also play a role in peak to human xenotransplantation? Can we detect the NMHC2 uh, in peak tissue perfused with human blood? And do human antibodies uh, bind to porcine NMHC2 in vitro and in perfusion experiments? What we did uh, is that we took the sequence which was uh, published by my Carroll's group. Um, this is a 12 amino acid uh, peptide, uh, and we um, got a commercial anti serum against uh, this peptide, which uh, should be directed um, to NMHC2C. And we use this NMHC2C antiserum uh, for immunofluorescence on porcine tissue after xenoperfusion which we did with human blood, and also after incubation of porcine endothelial cells with human serum. And we also used Western blot to identify the NMHC2 antigen in the tissue. And this is our um, perfusion model. So you have here a, a, a pig limb. This is, uh, can be a transgenic one, which we uh, got in collaboration with the people uh, in Munich uh, from uh, Eckhart Wolf's group, uh, and um, it can also be, of course, a, a wild type uh, pig limb. And you see that we have a perfusion. So here you have the, the draining uh, veins. We have the um, blood, which is uh, where the oxygen is used in the tissue, and it's oxygenated and goes back into this limb tissue. You can ask yourself, of course, why are they perfusing pig limbs? Um, that, that was in, con in, in another context, which is more related to replantation uh, than, uh, trans than transplantation or xenotransplantation. But it has a, a big advantage, and that is that we can perfuse for up to 12 hours. And if you uh, look at these uh, experiments, then wild-type perfusion after 12 hours, or also 
CD46 HLE transgenic pig limbs perfused for 12 hours, you see a clear upregulation of this NMHC2 expression. And that was highly significant um, as compared to baseline. And it was uh, significantly reduced when we used the transgenic uh, limbs. And we saw the same also uh, if we did a Western blot, there is an upregulation after 12 hours perfusion. In, in all the samples here. And then we looked at uh, whether there was any co-localization with human IgM, and uh, first of all, we stained uh, the tissue samples after 12 hours of uh, perfusion. So green uh, would be the antibodies, and red is the NMHC2 antigen, and we see uh, co-localization both in wild type and in HLA E CD46 transgenic pig limbs. And this is just a control to show you that uh, the uh, anti-serum we had is in fact specific for this peptide which uh, was used for immunization. If we, uh, co if we incubate uh, the slides uh, before staining with the peptide, there is no more staining with the anti antibodies. And we did uh, in vitro experiments with uh, porcine uh, aortic endothelial cells. And also there you see a uh, binding of uh, antibodies against uh, the peptide and co-localization to a lower extent here because I think it has to do with, with the fact that there is no ischemia here uh, with IgM and with IgG here for the transgenic cells and here for the wild type cells. And I come to the uh, conclusions uh, of, of our uh, data. So we conclude that the expression of the NMHC2 antigen is seen in this uh, pig limb xenoperfusion experiments uh, at baseline already, but at significantly higher levels after 12 hours of xenoperfusion. And that in xenoperfused tissue, uh, the co-localization with human antibodies suggests uh, that expression of the NMHC2 antigen might contribute to antibody-mediated xenorejection. But there are, of course, limitations here, and that is that co-localization of antibodies are not a strict proof. Um, of antibody binding to this epitope, that inhibition of uh, uh, natural antibody binding uh, with the peptide is still pending, and in vitro experiments were not uh, convincing so far. And that the staining which you saw uh, on the endothelial cells um, is probably intracellular and has to do with the fact that a complement activation uh, permeabilized these cells. And I, I would like to acknowledge uh, the people who were involved here. Uh, Pavan Garimela, Ricardo Sfrizo, who uh, did I'm sorry, uh, the most of the experiments. Is yeah. up. Okay. So, thank you. And we, <laughs> we have time only for one question. There is. Uh, Robert, I, I suppose you could argue it's, it's not really a xeno antigen because it, it probably binds pig IgM as well. Is that? Yeah, that that could indeed be the case, and yes. uh, and it would be a, a, like a transient antigen. So once the ischemia reperfusion has passed, you would see well, down my regulation. My feeling is that it might play a role um, if if this whole story holds true uh, as soon as the endothelial cells are activated, and as long as we cannot really prevent the activation of the endothelium, we we could have this problem with these natural antibodies binding to this NMHC2 epitope. Okay, thank, thank yeah. you, Robert.